Um, we're going to go back to the very last day of sixth grade. Um, sixth grade was a terrible year for me. I don't know why. There's not that many serious adult shit you can hate in sixth grade, but I hated it. But the very last day, something felt different. Something felt amazing. I knew this summer was going to be awesome. And it was because I was a man. <laughs> yes, you may laugh, but I was a man on the last day of sixth grade. And a lot of people can, you know, they have their ideas of what manhood is. Some people think it's a certain age. Some people think you can do something. You can vote. You can fight in a war. You can do something that makes you a man. But I, at sixth grade, the last day of sixth grade, I knew that was all bullshit. It was complete bullshit. You were a man when you could grow a fucking mustache. And I had one. And it was glorious, glorious. When I think back, I imagine Tom Selleck and all that. He had a fucking comb and everything. But in reality, it was like a dirt stash. It looked like Jimmy's off an ice cream cone or something. But I was a man and I knew it. And uh, I remember General Patton once said, that duty is the essence of manhood. And as a sixth grader, I knew that me and my fucking mustache had a duty. And this summer, we were going to get it. We were going to put that mustache to good work. So, like any noble mustache sixth, sixth grader, I went upon this summer, and I started an enterprise. A business of sorts. First, it started with R-rated movies. My friends who could not get in and watch movies with boobies, I bought them tickets. <laughs> I was the best at buying tickets for movie movies. They loved me. And I started to realize, you know what, it's three dollars for these tickets and these little dickheads don't have mustaches, I'm gonna make money. So it was three fifty, four dollars for a ticket. I started like that. And then it kept getting bigger and bigger. I started buying booby magazines and the, the world was the oyster in terms of this mustache. I could just walk into 7-Eleven and rub that little Jimmy Dirt stash on my lips and I could make money. I knew it. Cigarettes were next. I, I fucked a lot of kids' lives up. They're probably coughing right now and it's my fault, but who cares? Fireworks. Everything. That mustache. <sighs> the money I made on that mustache. So I kept it going and kept it going. And I compiled all this money on my enterprise. I was like the Tony Montana fucking contraband in this neighborhood. But I didn't have a Michelle Pfeiffer. I did not have a girl. I had a mustache, but I had no girl. And I had this plethora of money sitting under my bed, so I needed to put it to something. Something that Tony Montana would put it to. So I bought pegs for the back of my huffy bicycle. <laughs> pegs back then. That was... You were king. Your bike was now a limousine. So I screwed these fucking pegs on the back of my bike and girls hop on. I will drive you. We will get water rides. We will get ice cream. I, the city was a pussy just waiting to get fucked as Tony Montana said. Me with my bike and my pegs. It kept getting bigger. I got chromies. They're the things that screw up the tires so the air doesn't come out of the tires. People have little black ones like you have on your car, but I had fucking dice. Gold ones. Gold dice on my bike. And I was, I was king. I had girls on the back of the seat and everything, and I drove around, and summer was mine. I love that summer. Maybe one of the best summers ever. But then school started. Back to school. The summer of fun was over. But I was going back to king. Tony Montana never went back to king. He died, but I wasn't dying. I was going back to king. So I go back the first day, and... In the, in the little schoolyard, I went to a small Catholic school, everyone heard the stories of the fireworks and movie magazines and movie movies and everything I did for the, the town, the neighborhood, everything. I was a king. Until I went to the classroom and still felt like a king, still had the dirt stash. It was a little bit more developed. It was dark now. It was black. So I'm sitting there, and then a note comes up to the teacher. A note usually meant someone screwed up. Unfortunately, that day, I was the screw-up. They said, Mr. Miller, the principal wants you down at the office. The principal was a uh, Sister Mary. If she wasn't devoted to the Lord, she could have been a professional wrestler of some sort. She was scary. She was big. She was huge. She was nuts. 
So I'm walking down, and I remember walking down the hallway, looking in the, the glass of the trophy case, looking at my dirt stash, making it was sure it was straight. She knew something. She knew about the porno. She knew about the fireworks. She knew about the R-rated movies. I'm so done. I'm so done. I get in the office. I sit down. There's the big comfy seat that she sat in and the little chair that I sat in. And I look across and I'm like, what was it? Was it, was it the, the fireworks? Was it the R-rated? I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm in so much trouble. She looks across and she says, I never thought in my entire career teaching grade school, Catholic school, I would tell a seventh grader they have to go home and shave that mustache off of their face. But you need to lose that right now. It's disgusting. It's terrible. It's unacceptable. She sent me packing. And that was the day that Tony Montana's, it just ended. It was over. Thank you.